Hi, I am Michael Buckoff from the English Language Program at California State University, San Bernardino, and you are one of my students, and you just completed a TOEFL Independent Writing Practice Test. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and read and comment and make any corrections with your essay so you can know what you need to do to improve your writing and ultimately so you can score higher on the writing section of the TOEFL IBT exam. Now I'm also the founder and the materials writer for OnlineTOEFLCourse.com and also for BetterTOEFLScores.com. I scored your essay at 3.25 out of 5 or 20 points out of 30. Now in our class, according to the syllabus, that will translate into 325 is 79%. That's a grade I'm going to give you on this writing. Now why did I give you this score that I did? So let's take a look at, at where you are. I, I look in the 3 area, right? I'm putting at a low 3 here. So um, I think you have some problems with sentence formation, word choice, you have accurate but limited range sentence structures and vocabulary. So I think it's a lot of it is either, either your word choice or your grammar. And I think that's bringing your score down a bit. Okay, so let's take a look at each essay now. University life. What if you did this instead of saying university life it and we make this is um, and then we can say this So university life, playing an essential part in our lives, prepares us for our future careers to be um, a success in our jobs. Sometimes many students must, I'm just going to say must live. So just say many students must live with roommates while they you can't miss your verbs, even in your dependent clauses. You got to make sure your if you have a complex sentence, you'll need to have a subject and a verb in the independent clause and a subject and a verb in the dependent clause. Also, several students don't know how to cook, and that can be hard for them. Maybe put that, say also, several students, um, I don't know several students, that's too specific. You don't want to be that specific. I would just say many. Many students don't know how to cook or do other independent tasks, such as paying bills and cleaning living spaces. Then maybe put which can be hard for them. But it's a little bit awkward, this sentence. How does it relate back to what you said before? So you're saying that how about many students face the difficulty of so sometimes many students face the difficulty of having to live with roommates while they attend universities also 
these students we'll put may not know how to cook or do other independent tasks such as paying bills and cleaning living spaces which can be hard for them although although is a subordinating conjunction so there's there's no real need to put the comma after it unless you said however then you could justify it in that way but although there are diverse opinions although there are many diverse opinions about 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 the most important qualities of roommates to be friendly I would just put to be friendly to be respectful and to be responsible are three Maybe like that. Okay, let's check the paragraph length here. So we have, it's about 100 words. So university life playing an essential part in our lives prepares us for our future careers to be a success in our jobs. Sometimes many students face a difficulty of having to live with roommates while they attend universities. Also, these students may not know how to cook or do other difficult independent tasks, such as paying bills and cleaning living spaces, which can be hard for them. So what I did here to make it fit together is I put face a difficulty in the one sentence before it, and then here I put which can be hard for them. So by using the word difficulty in one sentence and using hard in the next, it made a little bit better transition of those two sentences in your paragraph. Although there are diverse opinions about the most important qualities of roommates, to be friendly, to be respectful, and to be responsible are three characteristics that will make someone compatible with others. And that's the first paragraph. Let's take a look at your next paragraph. So first of all, being a friendly person is a good roommate to have. We can enjoy some time together. Or how about being, being friendly? How about this? We want to tie this back and import. How about a crucial Try not to be <laughs> too uh, crucial trait being friendly allows. <laughs> okay, first of all, a crucial trait. Being friendly allows roommates to enjoy each other. 
For example, when I was on the campus of California State, University San Bernardino and I would separate this because this whole area you have to look at this as a as a dependent clause I had I had an awesome roommate And instead of his, I'm going to say who's here, whose name is John. I had an awesome roommate whose name is John. Put a comma here so we have a little bit longer sentence. Who always greeted me when I entered the room and often we... I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna say played often we played video games when we didn't have any assignments or exams to do when I had questions this is why you're getting the lower score you're not controlling your verb tenses very well here so when when I had some questions about English, right, so he always, you can't say was helped me because was and then helped is passive voice. But you're saying he, which is the doer of the action, right? So you don't want passive voice here. So you want to say uh, uh, he always helped me. You can say furthermore. Um, yeah, I don't know because uh, I think you should not bring up the chef thing because the whole purpose here is to talk about why being friendly is important. This one's talking about how he's a good cook. So I think we don't want to bring up this idea. We need to, we need to stay on this point. So what I did is, is I deleted the, the area about being a cook and I stayed on the friendliness idea up here. So a crucial trait, being friendly allows roommates to enjoy each other. For example, when I was on the campus of California State University, San Bernardino, I had an awesome roommate whose name is Juan, who always greeted me when I entered the room and often we played video games when we didn't have any assignments or exams to do. When I had some questions about English he always helped me. After spending several months together I told him one day he was one of the best friends I had ever made during my stay in the US. In fact until today even though I'm in Saudi Arabia now I think of Juan like a brother. I hope that other people I meet in my life will be just as friendly as Juan was to me. So that's what I would do there. So the key is try to keep everything focused around the topic of that particular paragraph. Okay, then you say, second, being responsible is an important feature of a roommate. If we're responsible, we will avoid... I'm going to put if roommates are responsible. They will not get into how about inter personal conflict, something like that. In addition, we should put some rules I don't know. Let's see. We should put some rules when we're living together. No one can break through them. We must not ignore.
So I think that this idea here where it says um, about we should put some rules, I would put that first right after the topic sentence and then put maybe the interpersonal conflicts in the example after that. Okay, so here's how the paragraph looks. So second, being responsible is an important feature of a roommate. To maintain an orderly and harmonious atmosphere, roommates should set some rules and if everyone living in that apartment is responsible, then he or she will not ignore the rules, thus helping them to avoid interpersonal conflicts. To illustrate, I know one of my friends you want to put who, you need an adjective clause here. I know one of my friends who was complaining about his, how about, So look at what I'm doing here. I'm trying to keep this paragraph a little bit better connected. So irresponsible here. Uh, we have responsible here. We have responsible here. So I know one of my friends who was complaining about his irresponsible roommate because he didn't wash the dishes. If you say dishes in the living room, it makes more sense to say the dishes in the kitchen, right? So I don't think you need to put this at the end here. That's a little awkward. He didn't wash the dishes, nor did his roommate ever clean the living room. Also, my friend told me his roommate always forgot to throw the garbage away. If, if a roommate I'm going to put just A in general, right? You're just saying if a roommate is taking charge of his or her work, he or she will be a more responsible person. And I think that's okay there. We can probably end the paragraph there. That's 105 words. It's not quite as developed as this one. This one is 141. But still, it's good enough. Okay, finally, let's look at your next paragraph. And this is the one you kind of ran out of time on this paragraph. It probably would have been better if you just omitted it and not even use it because both of these paragraphs are fairly well developed. But once you put it in there, I got I to gotta evaluate it. I have to evaluate how developed it is, how roommates... should be helpful. How about especially when there is a problem? For example, assume that my roommate is a new visitor who does not have a guideline of his or her plans for staying in my city. Okay. I will tell him or her what the good places are for enjoyment. So I will be helpful by, right? So now let's work on this. We need to develop this a little bit more. So it's 46. We need about 100 words here. That shows a fairly good uh, paragraph. So let's see what we can do to develop it a little more. So if you develop this paragraph, it might look like this. You talked about, you know, understanding the different things in the city and all that, but it's too much. You're going to talk about too many different things. So how about this? You might say, Finally, roommates should be helpful, especially when there is a problem. For example, assume that my roommate is a new visitor from another country who does not know how to get a California state driver's license. 
I will be helpful by taking him to the Department of Motor Vehicles so that he can take the written and driving test and maybe too many so that to qualify him to drive legally. In addition, I'll even help him prepare for the written exam and I can even practice driving with him to give him some defensive driving tips. My roommate Juan, whom I've already talked about, helped me to prepare and pass the DMV written and driving test. So that would be a way to do that. Okay, so in the very end, you have to sum up. So we have our conclusion here. So it's, it's sometimes a pretty good strategy to put a transition word in there. Um, friendliness. How about responsibility? You forgot the third one here. Helpfulness are three significant qualities of a good roommate because he or she will make our university lives easier and more interesting instead of causing trouble how about instead of causing trouble comma let's say uh, boredom comma and how about conflict So what did I do there? I, this is called parallel structure. You said trouble, which is a noun. I use boredom, which is a noun. I use conflict as a noun. Right? That's what I would do there. Okay, so those are the changes that I'm recommending. So again, your score is around 3.25 out of 5, 20 points out of 30. Uh, if you make the changes that I made here, I think that you would be closer to, uh, you know, 30 points out of 30. Let's look at it one more time, and then I'm going to go into my website for a minute here. Okay, university life playing an essential role in our lives. prepares us for our future careers to be a success in our jobs. Sometimes many students face the difficulty of having to live with roommates while they attend universities. Also, these students may not know how to cook or do other independent tasks, such as paying bills and cleaning living spaces, which can be hard for them. Although there are diverse opinions about the most important qualities of roommates, to be friendly, to be respectful and to be responsible are three characteristics that will make someone compatible with others. First of all, a crucial trait, being friendly allows roommates to enjoy each other. For example, when I was on the campus of California State University, San Bernardino, I had an awesome roommate whose name is Juan, who always greeted me when I entered the room, and often we played video games when we didn't have any assignments or exams to do. When I had some questions about English, he always helped me. After spending several months together, I told him one day that he was one of the best friends I'd ever had during my stay in the U.S. In fact, until today, even though I'm in Saudi Arabia now, I think of Juan like a brother to me. Or how about this? I think of Juan like a brother. I hope that other people I meet in my life will be just as friendly as Juan was to me. Second of all, being responsible is an important feature of a roommate. To maintain an orderly and harmonious atmosphere, roommates should set rules. And if everyone living in that apartment is responsible, then he or she will not ignore the rules, thus helping them to avoid interpersonal conflicts. To illustrate, I know one of my friends who was complaining about his irresponsible roommate because he didn't wash the dishes. Nor did his roommate ever clean the living room. Also, my friend told me his roommate always forgot to throw the garbage away. 
If a roommate is taking charge of his or her work, he or she will be a more responsible person. Finally, roommates should be helpful, especially when there is a problem. For example, assume that my roommate is a new visitor from another country who does not know how to get a California state driver's license. I will be helpful by taking him to the Department of Motor Vehicles so that he can take the written and driving test to qualify to qualify himself to drive legally. In addition, I'll even help him prepare for the written exam and I can even practice driving with him to give him some defensive driving tips. My roommate Juan, who I've already talked about, helped me to prepare and pass the DMV written and driving test. To sum up, To sum up, friendliness, responsibility, and helpfulness are the three significant qualities of a good roommate because he or she will make our university lives easier and more interesting instead of causing trouble, boredom, and conflict. And there you go. So those are the changes that I would make in your writing. So based on your writing and your level right now, I have some ideas about specific lessons in my online TOEFL course you can study in order to improve your overall writing proficiency. And of course, you can improve your TOEFL writing score uh, as a result. Okay, vocabulary. Uh, I'm going to suggest right now for you to take a look at vocabulary lesson number three. That's a good one for you right now. You see where it says vocabulary ebook of 200 basic TOEFL words? Study that. Master those words. Make sure you understand nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and verbs. And there are practice exercises in that ebook to help you with that because you're not always sure you know what form of the word is going to work best. And that affects your word choice and also your parallel structure. So that's my first suggestion. Okay, in the grammar part of my course, you have quite a few problems here. So let's take a look at different things here. Uh, make sure, if you do lesson number one, make sure that you have, you understand the concept of having one subject and one verb in sentences, right? And then also understand... Um, maybe sentences with adjective clauses, lesson six. I think that's a good lesson for you. Uh, a big one for you is word forms. Lesson number 12, make sure you understand how adjectives are different from verbs, how verbs are different from nouns, how nouns are different from adverbs, and so on. Uh, parallel structure, lesson 14, check that one out. Uh, check out lesson 16, count nouns and non-count nouns. Go over your verb tenses, lesson 17, 17.1, 17 17.2, 17 17.3. And let me keep looking here. Uh, lesson 25, comma twice is run on sentences and fragments. Check that one out. Okay, how about, okay, let's go to the writing part. So you understand the overall concept, I think, of, of writing, but I think sometimes you want to you wanna keep that, that really specific focus within each paragraph, and I have exactly the writing lesson that can help you with that. Uh, how about a couple of things this lesson lesson 5.5 how to show depth and complexity of thought go over that lesson then writing the perfect paragraph and check that one out I think that'd be a good lesson and thank you for doing this writing practice test uh, I hope that you've gotten some ideas on some things that you can do to improve your writing so let's just kind of do a quick recap. So as we went through the video, uh, I made a few changes, uh, sentence structure, word choice type issues. 
uh, I straightened out some of the organizational things in the paper and I also added a little bit more detail to at least two of your paragraphs so you develop the topic a little bit more. So, it is said by a Chinese philosopher, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step and it is with academic writing. It's step by step, uh, follow my suggestions, study the recommended lessons, and then keep doing some writing practice tests and I'll grade them as you send them to me and I'll give you a score so you can have a general idea how you're doing. Alright, and thank you for completing this practice test and uh, keep up the good work.